Do you need some help getting ready for the Praxis Early Childhood Education Exam? That's exam code 5025. My name is Elizabeth. I'm a college professor and a test prep expert for study.com. In this video, we will walk through four scientific inquiry practice questions from this exam so that you're confident on test day. Are you ready? Let's jump in. Question one. Which of the following represents a crucial initial step in the scientific process? Is it communicating results, conducting controlled experiments, research, or analyzing experiment results? Before we answer the question, let's begin by reviewing the scientific process. The scientific process, otherwise known as the scientific method, is a systematic procedure that we use to gain knowledge through observation and experimentation. There are seven steps in the scientific process that must take place in sequential order, beginning with asking a question or making an observation about the world around you, then conducting background research on that topic before forming a hypothesis, which is a testable if-then statement. Then we will conduct an experiment and collect data. Next, analyze data. Then we can draw a conclusion from that analysis. And finally, we will report the findings. So as you can see, all of the answers here are steps in the scientific process. But since it is a systematic approach, we are going to follow the order and look for the initial step in this process. Based on what we now know, we can exclude communicating results because that would come at the end of the process. We can exclude conducting controlled experiments because there are initial steps that need to take place before that. And analyzing experiment results comes towards the end of the process as well. So the crucial initial step in the scientific process here would be conducting research. Researchers must first gather information about a topic so we can understand the existing findings and theories. So research would be the correct answer for this question. Problem two. Which of the following is the structure of a hypothesis in the scientific process? Is it a detailed analysis of experimental data, a summary of research findings, a list of observations, or an if-then statement predicting an outcome? Let me begin by pointing out that some of these distractors in the answers are referring to different steps in the scientific process. However, the question specifically asks us to identify the structure of a hypothesis. Let's eliminate a few of the incorrect answers, starting with a detailed analysis of experimental data. This is what is going to occur after the study has been conducted during the data analysis phase and is not reflective of the structure of a hypothesis. Next, the structure of a hypothesis is not a summary of research findings. That is what we're going to get when we draw conclusions from a completed study. Next, we can eliminate a list of observations. Although observations are used to inspire the creation of a hypothesis, they themselves are not the hypothesis. The correct answer is an if-then statement predicting an outcome. A hypothesis is a testable prediction and it's often structured as an if-then statement. For example, if I water my plants more frequently, then they will grow taller. This proposes a testable relationship between two variables. The if clause represents the independent variable and the then clause predicts the expected outcome or behavior. This structure reflects the purpose of a hypothesis in the scientific process, which is simply to propose a testable prediction that can be evaluated through experimentation. Question three. A teacher introduces students to the following question. Does the speed of a marble change depending on the incline that it traverses down? If required to use the scientific method, which of the following is the best approach for the students to take after the teacher poses the question? Would it be conduct an experiment that analyzes different inclines and marble speeds? Develop reasoning that would prove that the question prompts a null hypothesis? Conduct scientific research online to synthesize the answer? Or develop a hypothesis focused on the student's initial answers to the question? So here we need to, again, look at context clues from the question. So we want to remember we are focusing on using the scientific method and we are looking for the best approach for the students to take after the teacher poses the question. So the initial 
steps that the students are to take in this scientific method. So this would mean questioning first, right? That is the basis of the scientific method. We're going to question. And once we do that, we're able to create a hypothesis. Remember, the statement that the students will try to prove through experimentation is the hypothesis. So they're going to want to develop a hypothesis focused on the student's initial answers to the question. We are not conducting any research yet. We are not trying to synthesize the answer. We are not doing an experiment. And a null hypothesis is actually disproving the hypothesis. So we are not there yet either. So the correct answer would be to develop a hypothesis focused on the student's initial answers to the question. Question four. At the start of a new life science lesson, you take your class on a nature walk. Which of the following steps in the scientific process are students participating in? Experimentation, observation, data collection, or analyzation? So we will look again at the context clues in this question. We are using the scientific process once again, and we are simply taking the class on a nature walk. So we have no other information about what they're doing, just walking through nature. So paying attention to these context clues, we know that the students are just conducting research by simply observing nature at the start of this new lesson. There is no experimentation happening. There is no data collection. They're not bringing anything back with them and they're not analyzing anything. They are simply observing nature. So the correct answer here would be observation. I hope this video was helpful and you're feeling a little more comfortable with how to approach the test. For additional help on the Praxis exam, check out our other videos in this channel. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our new videos. You can also get a lot of help preparing for this and many other exams on the study.com website. As a member, you can access short, targeted video lessons, extra study materials, personalized study plans, and hundreds of practice questions just like the ones we went over. We'd love to hear about your experience and what else we can do to help you get ready for your test. So leave a comment below with your suggestions or questions. Also, it would be great if you'd come back and share with us how you did. Study well and good luck on your test.